right, so if you guys are caught up on videos, you know that upcoming we have the full review on the Pluma, which is sitting behind me right here. Um, and I'm working on that for you guys now. However, there is one feature on the Pluma that I have yet to use, and that is the 3D weight shift system they have. So, that. So real quick, these are the Pluma weight shift arms, obviously, okay? And it comes shipped to you with one of them unlocked. So you see how this moves here? This weight shift arm moves back and forth, up and down. Most paramotors, the weight shift arm only moves up and down, and that's how you weight shift. This gives you side to side motion as well. Now the other side is locked, so this does not move. This is solid and moves just like um, the weight shift arm of any other paramotor here. Now, this can be unlocked, and when you unlock this um, and make it like this one, they call that 3D weight shift. So the only idea behind 3D weight shift is greater weight shift control, so more responsiveness. I think the Pluma, even the way it is now, has pretty good weight shift. That's one of the things I like about it. Um, I put it over the Scout in terms of weight shift, but under the SkyTap Angel, which I think is the, the pinnacle of weight shift. So yeah, let's get this thing unlocked and uh, see how she flies. Okay, so before I take it all the way off, I just wanna show you guys what the difference is between the sides. So I've loosened it up and it's already unlocked now. But you can see it's got this metal washer here and then like a nylon washer, arm, nylon washer, metal washer. This side, what's missing is that nylon washer and there's also much less thread shown on this side. So on the other side, I didn't show you guys, but there was a bunch more thread. So this is in the manual and I'm gonna read the manual before I go launch, but I'm gonna set it up how I think it should be and consult the manual, but I think I'm getting it here. Um, but yeah, that's what it looks like before you take the bolt all the way off. Let's take it all the way off. Oh, it's not going to come off my fingers. I'm going to take that all the way off, consult the manual, make sure this thing's not going to come flying out while I'm flying. And then we'll go launch. Yeah. All right, so quick update on that. You definitely need more pieces, and I'm glad I checked. I told you I was going to consult the manual, and I did. Um, but yeah, in my pack that came with my paramotor came this. So there's additional nylon washers, and here's what it says in the bag. These washers need to be used in place of the nylon washers on both sides of the mobile bar to unlock the 3D system and go into racing mode. And racing is in caps lock, so you know it's about to be legit. So let's get these put on. Looks good to me. There you have it, guys. Uh, can't really be more straightforward than that. You literally take out these nylon washers of which they give you extra ones. I don't know if these are a wear item or not, but those are not worn out. It doesn't look like it anyway. And then you replace them with those little washers that were in that pack. You can't see them. They're tiny, but they're in there and they just give the space um, for this to move around. So now this arm is unlocked and this arm is unlocked. And here's a little preview of the upcoming Pluma review. This is amazing. Get right to the engine, right to those bolts. That's one of my likes. All right, here we go. Clear prop. All right, so I've obviously talked to people about the 3D weight shift, and I haven't heard anybody say anything bad about it, but I have people say they tried it and they went back. Um, now, other companies do utilize weight shift like this. The one that comes to mind is Scout. So Scout has something called the hybrid bars, and it's the same concept. Um, I think the carabiners are actually attached to the swing arms via like a soft type link. So you get the same thing, you get the side to side motion that uh, you don't get with the normal Scout swing arms. So um, guys use them and end up going back because it's too much weight shift. So I don't know how it's gonna feel. I don't know how I'm gonna like it, um, but I do s expect it to work. And I expect it at least to be interesting. The other thing I've heard is that on takeoff, your motor torques more. So if you guys remember, this motor doesn't have dynamic torque compensation. It relies on offset uh, uh, hook end points, more or less, for your weight shift. Now, on the ground, that means that you have no weight shift. You have to be flying for it. So once you have the 3D arms hooked up, 
you get more articulation and more movement in the arms, and it torques more. So I, I mean, I'm not probably not going to feel it, but I've heard that the motor will twist on your back a little bit more. So I'll be looking out for that and feeling for it, but I don't know how it's going to go. All right. We also have a couple more people coming. One of them is coming in an airplane, so I'm going to go for a quick flight. It's still a little early and um, a little bit shifty wind-wise, but definitely still safe. And this is a perfect wind, so I'm going to hit it and see how it goes. All right. Adventure Pluma, 3D weight shift, take one. Here we go. Okay, so. I'm gonna pull my trims in just to lower the motor RPM a little bit so you guys can hear me a little better, but. Um, I did notice it on launch, but I only noticed it because I was looking for it. It wasn't anything like, if I didn't mention it or wouldn't have been thinking about it, I probably would have missed it. It's just, I noticed it turning a little more to the right, but it didn't turn me to the right. I just felt the motor a little bit crooked on my back. So, launching, I'd say, doesn't really do anything. A few altitudes later. Alright, so we're at a decent cruise altitude. This is where I would expect to feel the most. So. And it is bumpy, which is good because I can tell you that I do feel the harness shifting side to side, definitely more. Let's do a weight shift to the right. Okay, not bad. I don't know if it's any better. Let me go to the left. Okay, let me go to the right again. Let me try to do something here. I'm gonna put my hands on the brakes just in case, but I'm not gonna use them. Okay, well, holy shit. This is all weight shift. Oh! <laughs> okay, that was all weight shift. I didn't touch the brakes until I had to get out of that. And I also touched the brakes because my helmet got stuck on my netting. I need to take this damn goggle holder off my uh, helmet. But that was all weight shift. I can't tell you that, that it is more weight shift for sure. I mean, this is against the torque. And it's, it's pretty substantial. I mean, that's, I wish, it, this camera's not doing it justice. I should pull out the 360 cam. It's hard to weight shift with the 360 cam though. But stand by for 360 footage. So here is weight shift to the left. Here's weight shift to the right. And that's about all I want to do with my hands off the brakes. Cause if I go back the other way, um, I start to get into minor wing over territory and I don't feel like doing that holding a camera. So um, that's what it looks like and I mean I get a lot more feedback. I think if I was had more free flight experience I could give you guys a better, better review of this but I can see why you'd like this for cross country flying. I don't see why you wouldn't want this. You just get better weight shift. All right, the next thing I wanted to test is see how it performs under a full climb. So, again, with the torque compensation on this unit, it relies on you inducing a weight shift turn via your harness, like a preset in your harness to compensate for torque. I may have to compensate more or less. I really don't know. So I'm going to see how unlocking that uh, 3D system affects that. So let's climb. There's a full throttle climb out. Marginally more twisty, so I had to compensate a little bit more with the 3D unlocked. That's what I would say on that one. Um, I usually have to use a little bit of brake or weight shift the way I have my torque compensation set up, the location I have it set up at, but uh, that was also manageable. So uh, let's find a good box to get in here to do some a little bit of acro and we'll see how the 3D does with that. All right, got some altitude. Let's see how it does. Um, some light acro. Hi. 
Yeah, I don't know if I felt any difference there, to be honest with you. Um, I do weight shift when I do that, but um, I'm not, yeah, I mean, I didn't feel anything different. It felt fine. We'll go down low and see how it does uh, with the yank and bake style, style flying here. little buggy but we'll try some foot drags and this grass is really long. Again I don't think weight shift is much of a factor when foot dragging it's all throttle control and uh, brake control. I mean you do turn a little bit when you're foot dragging you can do this these little sways but again this is all throttle and brake. Um, so yeah fine there. Alright guys well I'm gonna go fly around a little bit and get a little bit better feel for this. I'm really all out of tests I can perform on it other than just flying it. So um, I'll stop talking for a little bit and fly around. Son. All right, so um, that was Adam I was chasing, by the way. He's here about to go fly. Um, we got another guy in the ultralight stalking us. He did a touch and go, but didn't come hang out. What's that about? 3D weight shift. So I don't see any negatives to it. You guys got my thoughts in the air. I don't see why you wouldn't want it. it I definitely got more weight shift, and as I was flying around and got more comfortable with it, um, I actually had to start being a little more careful with the amount of weight shift I put in when I was yanking and banking down low because at a certain point I was coming up over a little bit too high uh, and I had to check myself a couple times. So I am definitely getting more weight shift. I'm getting more feedback in the harness. Um, full throttle climb out, I was worried about that because I thought it might twist me. I didn't feel anything too noticeable there. N nothing that you can't compensate with a tiny little bit of extra brake or something like that. Um, I'm gonna leave it the way it is uh, right now. I'm gonna leave it uh, with the 3D engaged and uh, fly it for a little while and... All right. Cut to, I don't know, week and a half later. So I've got maybe four or five more flights on the rig with the 3D steering engaged, or 3D weight shift engaged. 
Uh, so I've got a little better feeling for it. And here are my final thoughts. Um, first of all, when I did my initial test, I had my um, center strap tight. Uh, when I talked to the guys at Fly PPG, they told me you need to loosen that center strap so that the uh, arms aren't aren't being you know restricted because this center strap pulls the weight shift arms in toward each other and it kind of keeps them rigid. So I wasn't get, getting the full effect. So I loosened those up and I'm getting more uh, weight shift and more feeling in the harness than I was before. I'm I'm all over the place um, now. In flight, I like it. I don't see why you wouldn't want this. However, now that I have it loosened all the way, I do feel it in a full throttle climb out. So watch this. And by the way, my weight shift strap is completely loose right now. So this is without any torque compensation. Yeah, it's so much that I don't, like, I, I'm feeling, I'm twisting. Um, it's uncomfortable. I don't, it's an uncomfortable feeling, so I don't like that. Now, I can compensate with weight shift and brake and get it to fly straight, but um, that I'm not a fan of, the uh, full throttle climb out. Uh, and finally, I just did two launches right here in front of me. I went for my buddy Andy to take off. I've done two, and both of them, the motor torqued uh, a lot more to the right, especially this last one after I loosened up the middle strap. It torqued a lot to the right. Um, now again, I was expecting that, so I compensated for it, but if you weren't ready for that, that, you know, I don't know, it's just not ideal for launching, right? So what I would classify this, this configuration, this paramotor, as like an advanced configuration. You know, if you're wanting to go up and get the most weight shift possible and uh, the most response out of the harness, then this is the configuration for you. For me, I got enough weight shift before. I was happy with the weight shift in its original configuration with just one arm unlocked. So. Um, after this flight, I'm going to switch back to that. Uh, I preferred that. It was more comfortable. Um, and I didn't have to, you know, my launches were a little bit easier, which you know, guys, you guys know I value that a lot. And my full throttle climb outs were more manageable. So to me, the added weight shift is not worth it. I don't, I don't need it. Um, I was doing fine before. So it's fun. It's cool. It's advanced, I'll say. But for my flying style, I'm going to go back to the original, which is one arm unlocked. And that's pretty much all I got for you guys for this one. Um, expect the uh, Pluma review to come up soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, at Tom Kubot, and um, catch you guys in the next one. Peace.